Hey early birds, here are some VR worms for you. Some new and some you may have already seen. A sort of open-minded, explorative attitude. This was the first time I had written music for virtual reality. The world of Paper Beast is so well realized, it's so well defined, but there was a very specific sound set that either did or didn't work in the game. And that was very much in collaboration with Florian's uh, sound design because in this world, the sound design and the music and the sound effects should be almost imperceptible, the difference between them. So the sound of trees, um, the sound of different creatures, and that these should all be compatible with the music. The world itself is creating this sound. When I'm writing music, I try very hard not to listen to other music because I don't want to be led in one particular direction. I really would try to say that the complete influence for the game is the game itself. Any idea that we wanted to try, we had the freedom to try it. All of my music is about blurring that boundary between sound design and between music. One of the most exciting things about working in a VR environment and working on this game has been about trying to create sounds for things that you can imagine but can't see. For example, the sky opens, but this time you actually get to go into that world and you get to see the sky being torn open, and that's incredible.
ラギトゥアノンロキロスヒナ Okay, hello everyone. We are live, although really we're not live. We're in a you know, recording this, <laughs> but this is the Upload VR Showcase Summer Edition. Yes, the day is finally here.、Uh, I'm Jamie, one of your hosts for the next however long this is going to go on for. With me here is <laughs> Sina. Hey, I'm also going to be a host, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Over here, we, we've got David. Yo, yo, what up? <laughs> we've got、down. Tatiana. I have no hands, but I'm moving them. <laughs> We've got Ian. Thanks, I almost、Ian. knocked over a bottle. I yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how exciting! <laughs> so, thank you for joining us. By the way, if you're just here and you're wondering what the heck this is, this is our second ever summer showcase. And in half an hour from now, just under half an hour from now, we're going to launch into the main show. We're going to have a whole bunch of cool new reveals. New games are going to be announced. New VR games. New trailers are going to be showcased. It's going to be a really, really fun time. We're really excited for you to see what we've been working on、uh, with a lot of developers as well. Of course, in a very tough year to work with developers because they've been having a very tough time because of the global pandemic. So, as we as we'll say in the showcase, we're really thankful for everyone that's working with us this year. Going to be a good year. I'm excited. I think people are really going to. Really gonna like what we、uh, we have lined up. We've already seen some、uh, some early trailers for games like、uh, Play Bunker and Panzer Dragoon,、uh, Virtual Battlegrounds, and、uh, Paper Beast, which of course is coming to、um, to Steam VR this summer, which is really exciting.、Mm -hmm. Guys, I want in our pre-show here. I want to talk about the year that we've already had in VR so far. What, what are some of the best VR games? Oh, hang on. <laughs> Wait, I, was, what were some of your favorite VR games of the year so far? Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. 
Boom. Ooh, it's a good shout. Straight it's in. a great game. Yeah. Great game, especially like I don't know. I I told the I told Skydance this to their face. I said, you know, I was like, Archangel was kind of meh. You know, I'm gonna be real. <laughs> it was a mech combat game on rails, and they cried, and it did not. I don't know. It didn't scratch the itch. And then Walking Dead's overplayed. We already have a Walking Dead VR game in development. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this... I don't know. I was like, I don't know, guys. I don't know. But then they knocked it out of the park. And it defied every expectation I had. And it's one of the best VR games out there now. It's it's fantastic. Definitely definitely one of the most ambitious VR games of the year, mm -hmm. for sure. Because that it kind of integrates a lot of the kind of physical work we saw first in Boneworks last year. But then also puts a lot of other systems at play, right? Like there's there's factions in the game, different human factions that are warring with each other. Then you throw the zombies in there as well, and it makes and for this in really a lot kind of, of weird ways, melting pot. It pump. has more depth than you would see from a AAA game that's not VR. You know, there's there's a lot going on in that game. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of depth. There's a lot of, um, you know, just really advanced physics with really good AI. There's great voice acting. I mean, it's. It top to bottom, it's a it's a stellar game, and it's just it's so good. Yeah. Hey, Tatiana, what what are, what's some of your favorite VR games of the year so far? I'm gonna say two of them. Obviously, <clears throat> Tetris Effect on Oculus Quest because you know, I yep. that that's just my jam. But um, that's a great chat. I really really like Oshay yeah. a lot more than I thought I would. It's a mm. simple concept, but I feel that it really utilized your body weight to you know really get a workout out of you and i definitely broke a sweat and i really enjoyed it a lot more than i ever expected i would yeah o shape is a really really uh, another great one Zina, you've really enjoyed playing o shape haven't you over the past yeah couple of absolutely months. uh especially the uh what is it the the charity song uh for the for the fitness that they brought in uh, yeah. over the course so of lockdown yeah they did a new charity song um where everyone that played it they donated a dollar um exactly. that was a really really good one <laughs> ian what are, you, what are you gonna say yeah half-life jeff that, that that is the official name of it I believe. <laughs> yes <laughs> unforgettable right yeah, it's not it just is. that one hour but the the moment you get to the dark areas of the game and the uh the sort of uh scarier or head crabs are coming at you that becomes i love to we've talked about this before but in your review you you captured it so much when he's talking about the sandwich from that moment on <laughs> that game hits its stride and mm, it's yeah, unforgettable sure. it'll be with me forever now i want there a is, sandwich <laughs> there is a um there's a really great moment in the jeff uh segment that everyone i think everyone remembers which is you lock Jeff in the uh, whiskey distillery room. Oh, vodka, sorry. Vodka, vodka yeah. And then you tra You get one of those puzzles where you're tracing the wires and you trace it back all the way to the room and you suddenly <laughs> realize that you're going to have to go back into that room. And that is some of the absolute smartest, most yeah. darn terrifying VR design I've ever seen. And that, what like one of the most powerful moments of the year, for sure. Definitely my favorite moment of that game. I want to give another yeah. shout out to the Room VR. Uh, that game is oh, incredible. Yeah, I want to finish game. the mobile ones first before I play it. The great, great I'm there design. with Tatiana on, on Tetris Effect too. By the way, yeah, that game. Is... Finally. Yeah. Well, great, great design um, on the puzzle front with the Room VR, right? Because yeah, the 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 great thing about that series was it was always so intuitive to the platform it was appearing on. So for mobile, it always really made sense because they really fought outside the box as it were to put it on that screen and i think david they really carried through that philosophy to uh a dark matter right yeah they did a really excellent job it was um extremely immersive and much longer than i expected um there, there's just so many different environments so much variety it's so interactive it's um it's just really great mm. I, I i gotta bring yeah. up echo arena on quest too that is just yes. phenomenal and yeah. uh, the thing about that one gets me is the wirelessness of <laughs> uh, being the in Quest uh, is so beautiful because I get sick really easily in VR and I don't get sick in Echo Arena. I might get mm. a little wobbly if I play it for an hour, but because I've got that freedom to turn around and you're feeling so competitive and thinking about all the gameplay, I don't think about the mismatch very much and it works out really well that's an incredible game and even though it's not officially out because it's in beta 
it's still pretty much free uh, for everyone. And so there's a lot of people jumping into it and it's amazing. Okay, cool. We're going to take a look at some more trailers, some more uh, reveals, some more gameplay, uh, and we'll be right back to talk about more of our favorite VR games of the year. Tonight, I tell my own story. You have to help me. They're going to hurt me. They say I'm infected. Can you help me somehow? Can you help me get out of here? Did you do that? All right, so there are a few more trailers for you, uh, including Republic BR, which came out 
on Steam VR. Uh, if you look over in the comments, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, we have got a bunch of codes for you. Uh, about 25 codes for 50% off on Republic VR. So grab them, try and get 50% off. Um, they're there for you now. Cool. So while you guys scramble for that, we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the top stories of the past year. Uh, Tatiana, why don't you start us off? Uh, well, I think one of the biggest stories is the Oculus Link, you know, the USB update. I think the best Absolutely. part about that is Harry working really hard to make the video about the requirements <laughs> and writing the article <laughs> and the step-by-step -step instructions only a week later to then see the update. Uh, but no, I mean, it is big because, you know, I remember having to wait for this $80 cable or however much it cost. You know, that oh, was my goodness, the yeah. best option. And now you can literally use the cable in the box, which personally I think should have been the case to begin with. And it Absolutely. doesn't have to be USB 3.0 anymore. So that that just shows how much we can go forward with our hardware even past release, because that is a big jump in my personal opinion. Yeah, for, yeah, sure. for sure. And uh, moving on from, uh, you know, pushing our hardware further, Ian, you've got a another great story to, to touch on. Yeah, Literally hand tracking. touch on. Yeah, uh -huh. hey. yeah hand hey. tracking. You can only, here's me uh, moving my uh, three last fingers, and you can't see them, but you can if I was in a hand tracking experience. And it's, <laughs> uh, it's pretty incredible. And the thing that I love about the USB cable and the hand tracking is they both released at the end of last year. They, they technically were out in the wild then, and it took a good half year for them to improve those features into really wide use. And we're just starting to see that start to kind of hit its stride right now. It's the simplest avatars, too. I can't wait for us to get them into these avatars that we have right now. And when we can do that with these avatars, it's going to be a whole other generation for even our download and our shows that we mm. do for people i can't wait to give you guys the finger too <laughs> okay i'm gonna stick my that finger was... in your nose with hand tracking i know there's gonna be a lot i of, think uh, are we gonna have to ban that on the showcase or even on our downloads or i guess i think he needs to friend. do something otherwise it will mm -hmm. blur it out whenever you sense chaos. it yeah i have my favorite story of the year is, is an evolving one as well and and that is tracking the progress of the next PlayStation VR headset. Absolutely, um, yeah. Which is not something that has been officially announced yet. Yesterday, uh, we're recording this on the Friday. Yesterday, we saw the announcement of PlayStation 5 proper with the console design, the new games, and then we went into our weekly podcast discussion, the VR download, which is done right here every Thursday evening or uh, evening in the UK um but we had a big argument yet yesterday like a big long really interesting discussion about how significant psvr2 is going to be to the market going forward and there's so there stands to be such a huge leap for that headset compared to the original headset which is now four years old and you know other other headsets that are four years old have seen refreshes like the oculus quest and a million iterations of the htc5 um so uh, for me, that's really, really exciting to follow because when PSVR 2 gets here, we're going to see such a leap in console VR gaming, and that's going to be so significant for so many people, uh, especially people that are tuning in now to see all the you know really cool VR gaming announcements we've got. Um, I think it's just really, really exciting, much in the same way uh watching the development of whatever happens next for oculus quest is right well speaking of psvr i'm hoping i mean it's obviously not my favorite story because there really is no story yet i am hoping we learn more about humanity soon uh to oh, see yeah. oh, yeah, new project for psvr and is it going to be a ps4 title or is it actually going to transfer over to the playstation 5 or both mm. i don't know but i'm you know mm. the trailer that we did see it was vague but all of his ideas are always very interesting and very deep. So I'm very curious and excited to hear more about the development of that game. You know, yeah, it's really sure. interesting. Um, I was actually speaking about this with Jamie the other day. Um, you watch these showcases, like you might watch um, the showcase coming up in about two minutes. And, oh. you know, there, 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 are, um, there are announcements that kind of come and then they disappear for so many years and then they come back all of a sudden 
so strong and like absolutely knock it out of the park, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, so yeah, we we saw a lot of that with uh with PlayStation, and you know, um, yeah. I wonder if we're gonna see. I mean, I I don't wonder. I know, but I'm gonna put it out there. <laughs> I wonder if we're gonna see that uh later on. Um, which I I guess you know, like transitioning out of this, it's. It's it's almost time, and we we really hope that you guys enjoy the next the next forty or so minutes of announcements and stuff. We've been working incredibly hard, of course. Like as we said earlier in the pre-show, developers have been working really really hard, and we're really grateful that you guys are here to to see what's what's next for VR today. I think you guys are going to have a lot of fun, so I think that's a good place to leave it. Ian, thanks so much for joining us. Tatiana, thanks so much for joining us. We're going to head into the main show. It's here. It's the Upload VR Showcase Summer Edition 2020. Woo! Get hype. See you in a second. Yeah. Hey, guys. I'm Jamie. I'm Zena. And welcome to the Upload VR Showcase Summer Edition. We'll be your host for the next 40 or so minutes of VR goodness. It's a huge, huge honor to be bringing you another show revealing the coolest upcoming VR games and experiences. Now, the developers featured today have been working incredibly hard throughout the stresses of lockdown to deliver these exciting announcements. I'm sure you'll join us in extending a huge thank you for their efforts. Also this year, we'll be taking the time to spotlight projects from Black VR developers, some available now and others coming soon. Of course, another big thank you goes out to our sponsor, Moss developer Polyarc. In fact, you'll be seeing a little bit of Quill throughout the show. Okay, that's enough from us. Sit back, relax and enjoy the first gameplay reveal of Solaris Offworld Combat. Solaris delivers frantic 4v4 action on Oculus platforms this August, and comes to PlayStation VR later this year. And now for a sneaky surprise. Our objective is to protect this sample whatever the cost. Don't hesitate to check any shadow that moves. He might as well be among us. And what will we do when the panther strikes? We will all be dead. It's too late. He's here. Show yourself! Good luck, Agent. I'm eager to see you in action. Hmm. You can sink your claws into Panther VR today on Steam. Now we'd like to introduce you to Dante. Hey guys, it's Dante Buckley here from Downpour Interactive. I remember discovering VR for the first time way back in 2013. I saw the Kickstarter for the Oculus Rift and was blown away. All I could think about were the types of games I could play with this new technology. However, I noticed over the years, no one was making the kind of game that I really wanted to play. A modern tactical first-person shooter game, similar to Arma, 
uh, Insurgency, and even the old SOCOM games. And so in 2015, I dropped out of college to pursue making just that, a VR first-person shooter game called Onward. Onward has been in early access on Steam and Oculus Home since 2016, and it's been growing and improving every day. I now have an amazing team working on the game located all over the world, and for the past year, we've been working on bringing Onward to the Quest, a completely revolutionary headset that is affordable and has no wires. We can't wait to get Onward into the hands of Quest players. We'll be unveiling gameplay and news on the port at the end of this month. Follow us on social media and stay tuned. See you guys in the battlefield. Hello, my name is Erik Odeldal. I'm the creative director at VR developer Fast Travel Games in Stockholm, Sweden. What if monsters were real? The next title coming from our studio is our most ambitious one yet, and it's set in a universe that some of you might recognize. Have a look. In Barclay Mansion, even the dead are terrified. Something happened here. Something vicious and cruel. And no one got out alive. Not even you. We are extremely happy to be working with Paradox Interactive in order to bring you the first VR game ever set in the world of darkness that includes Vampire the Masquerade and Werewolf the Apocalypse. But also, for the first time ever, Afterlife will let you experience the world of darkness from the perspective uh, of a wraith, a spirit of the dead. And as a thank you for the great reception we've received since our reveal, we've decided to show you some short glimpses of early gameplay footage. I hope this whets your appetite. Uh, a gameplay trailer will be released in a August, <laughs> so uh, please make sure to follow Wraith Afterlife on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram. And I hope to see you all in the world beyond the Shroud. Look out for more on Wraith later this year. Wait, why am I speaking like this? I'm David Hayter, and I play antagonist General Nikolai Zhirov in Phantom Covert Ops, releasing June 25th. Discover stealth action redefined for VR. Phantom Covert Ops. <coughs> Phantom Covert Ops finally drifts onto Rift and Quest later this month. Next up, we're proud to debut a brand new VR game from an all new studio. Bonjour et bienvenue à Ikimajo. On any normal day, there'd be about 15 people around, but these aren't normal times. So today, it's just us three. I'm Jan. I'm Sharif. And I'm Sammy. We all come from big studios and massive franchises, and we got really excited with the potential of VR. So in 2018, we decided to jump in. We founded Ikimasho with the ambition to create fun and deep games that make our players feel good. And when they look at their headset, they think, this is a portal I can use to go back into the world I love being in. Today is the day we lift the curtain on Star Shaman, our very first space exploration and spellcasting game. For the last 18 months, we've been working non-stop to create a game that will change how you think about immersion and movement in VR. And we designed it as a roguelite, so you will always have fun in your training. Think, easy to play, hard to master. But I think it's time to let you see it for yourself. Sami? And without further ado, 
we welcome you to Star Shaman. Starshamon looks like a groovy good time, which is something you might be in need of after spending some time with our next game. What are beasts? What flickers in the mind's eye when you hear the word? <laughs> Those vacant eyes, clouded over. Those devouring mouths, always slack. And the smell, yeah, that probably comes to mind too. Rot. Are we simply beasts? No. I am not a lowly animal. I should not be acting like one. Saints and Sinners gets even more gruesome with the meat grinder update, coming next month. Stay tuned for new quest games, Pistol Whip's roadmap, LON, and a heck of a lot more. Who or what is Umbra? You're the enforcement agency for this sector, and good or bad what they say goes. Don't know what else to tell you unless you want to reach out to them or show me your extra special permit card. I'm hanging up now. In the car, the night they let you out, you said you didn't know who you were anymore. You were saying you lost your path, or your purpose. Don't you think? Well, maybe this is the start of one. The rig looks like a juicy murder mystery, coming June 26th. Next up, we pass it over to Alex for some Space Team news. Hi, my name is Alex Earl and I'm the Community Manager for Space Team VR. One second. That's better. I joined the team about six months ago and honestly it's been a blast to work on this game. I grew up playing loads of cooperative games with my brother on the GameCube and I just feel so excited now to be able to be part of a team where we work on co-op games that are in VR. I've really loved working with the community, testing the game, making the trailers, doing social media, and I can't wait to show you guys what we've got coming up next. We're adding in mixed reality support, as you can see here, new languages through localization, an enhanced lexicon with new words and phrases, and brand new controls for you guys to play with. So please check out the trailer for the free content updates for Space Team VR. Yeah. 
Space Team will be ruining yet more friendships with its new update later this year. Where we're going next, we definitely need roads. Hi everyone, I'm Janis from Little Chicken. Together with Vertigo Games, we're bringing our game Traffic Jams to the Oculus Quest, the PlayStation VR and major PC VR platforms in September this year. In Traffic Jams, you get to try your hands at controlling traffic all around the world. And if you think that sounds easy, we'll throw all kinds of crazy things at you like angry pedestrians, meteorites, you name it. Today we're also really excited to announce that next to a beefy single player mode, Traffic Jams also sports a couch party mode. Invite up to four non-VR friends using their mobile devices. Let's check out this multiplayer trailer starring Cass and Cherry. you enjoyed the trailer and if you want to know more then you can check out our gameplay premiere video on our channel Rockas and Jerry VR on YouTube. And if you think you got what it takes, why not give it a try yourself in the Steam Game Festival starting now. Make sure to look both ways because Traffic Jams is coming in September. Next we pass it over to Zen Studios. What's up everyone, my name's Desiree Marsh from Zen Studios, and on behalf of the team, I'm really excited to announce that Operencia The Stolen Sun is coming to VR. Now be sure to check out Upload VR's interview with Operencia's lead writer Chris Baker later today. Now I really hope that you enjoy this trailer for the fantastical world of Operencia in VR. On the other side of imagination, there lies Operanzio. A world where reality embraces fantasy, where dreams foretell destinies, where history meets legend. Story to tell. Nostalgic Dungeon Calling gets a VR makeover with Apprentia. Our next game offers a different kind of nostalgia. It's a lot of work to brew coffee for one. Usually at home, I just suck on beans. Such a lonely road to go when you're Oh, I told Alice her kid wasn't allowed in here. He's always ruining my ceiling tiles with those pencils. Man, this job is boring. Want to take a few calls? Now, most of the time, they want to talk, but always hang up before you give your thoughts so they can't hark you back. You're on the air with Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Uh, you don't know me, but I think you're supposed to help me. And, and I know that sounds weird, but all week I've been having these 
uh, premonitions, I guess. And I was trying to ignore them, but what if they're important, you know? So I thought, okay, if I need to act on these clues I've been getting, then I need a sign to confirm it. And then you're like, show came on, and you said, hi, this is Taylor. <laughs> my middle name is Taylor, so <laughs> I think you're my guide. Um, I'm going to keep listening to you for more clues, okay? Bye. I'm all about the quirky radio DJ vibe in Area Man Lives. Now, let's move from disc jockeys to neon ninjas. Humanity is under great threat. Every neuron, synapse, and receptor in the human mind is being modified to create a world controlled by cyborgs. Lon continues to look like a promising story-driven action game coming soon to PC VR. Now we'd like to introduce you to Micah. Nana used to tell me when I fell to get back on my feet. But when things got really hard, imagine a place, a place where angels meet. Hi, my name is Micah. I'm the creator of Where Angels Meet, a cinematic VR experience. Uh, I created this piece in 2018 um, really to shed some light on what it's like to grow up as a young African-American man uh, in the U.S. and in the world. Uh, its message and its story is probably more relevant now than any other time. Uh, it's available for Oculus Rift. It was created as part of the Launchpad program uh, and I hope people take time to check it out. Hey, I'm Pietro from Transitional Forums, and I'm excited to share with you a bit about a project that we've been co-producing with the National Film Board of Canada called Agents, which is a new form of immersive storytelling that uses artificial intelligence and user agency to drive a real-time narrative. Now, it's not a game and it's not a film, but it's kind of somewhere in between where you can choose to interfere with the lives of these tiny intelligent creatures that live on a small floating planet. What's super cool about it is we're developing brains for these characters using reinforcement learning artificial intelligence, allowing them to think and act for themselves within our dynamic story world. Now even though it's early days in our training efforts, we're already seeing brains developing that lead to interesting behaviors and different types of story paths, and we often joke that Agents is becoming an experience that literally has a mind of its own. We're just finishing up production and the experience will be available soon across VR, mobile, and desktop platforms. We think you'll agree that Agents looks like one of the most intriguing experiences on the horizon. Now it's time to train your own brain with Gravity Lab. Thank you for choosing Gravity Lab. 
Our staff has been evacuated, but feel free to begin testing without us. To simulate the production use of our equipment, we created tests that use items to transport balls into beds. This is an experimental object. Please test with care. It's great to see Gravity Lab's physics-defying puzzles reaching Quest. We'll be back after a short word from our sponsors. your soul and offers you exciting captivity choices. Work off your karmic debt with mandatory work programs. <laughs> Hurry now, don't be late for work. Our compulsory surveillance monitoring is always watching you become a better you. We offer community outreach training that will reward good behavior. Hi, welcome to hell. And as a bonus, majestic boat rides. We'll have a hell of a good time. Off of a better you are not bellowed in the overworld, underworld, or anywhere else. Off of a hell of a good time does not imply that time has any meaning in the cabin of eternal torture. All comic judgments are trial or final. Trial by Tang looks like another great VR adventure from the makers of Form, full of mysteries that we can't wait to unravel.
From the developer of Dreadhalls, Cosmophobia promises another terrifying VR roguelike. Now we're debuting another type of spooky VR experience, this time for arcades. Why? What do we have here? Mortals entering our domain? <laughs> company. <laughs> it's going to be great getting back to the VR arcades for when Ghost Patrol debuts worldwide. Okay, back to home headsets with a new quest port. Do not fear death, my child. As death only makes you stronger. Don't grieve. In death, you're reborn. Yep, in death is back on Oculus Quest very soon. Okay, we're coming up to the home stretch. Let's take a look at what's to come. We'll have the latest look at Lo-Fi, new gameplay from Blaston, and a surprise from Alchemy Labs. We're moving you to Precinct 303. Should be a good fit. Most of the blocks jacked in, or too strung out to make trouble. Minor gang activity, some triad, crypto punks, AI rights activists. I'm sure you'll find ways to keep busy. Just try to keep your nose clean. I know it's tough. Nothing stays clean for long. Lo-Fi still oozes gritty style and we're looking forward to seeing more. Now we have the long-awaited return of a VR experience from Iron Man director Jon Favreau. Fun fact, Buddy the Goblin inspired the creation of Baby Yoda. Next, we'd like to introduce you to Derek Ham. When I created I Am A Man, 
I had no idea how transformative this form of storytelling could be. There's something powerful about virtual reality to enable someone to put on a headset and go back years, years ago, to experience events of the civil rights from a first person perspective. Hearing the sound, seeing the images played right before your eyes allows one to be reflective, to think about where we've been, to think about how much further we still have to go concerning issues of equality and issues of equity for people all over this nation. Vertigo Remastered offers a top-to-bottom retooling of the original game, coming next month. For this next one, make sure the kids are out of the room. Rated M for Mature! For Trover Saves the Universe, let me tell you a couple things about it. The Hail Satan channel is now available on channel 665. Just one click below channel 666, the Quilting Network. So smash that little piggy bank of yours and buy Trover Saves the Universe, coming soon to the Quest. And the final question of the game is... Trover, suck my own. I'm here, Chad, with your grandma. She's eating dirt off the ground. You know, I, I, could, I have a skill, which is this. I could do this. Oh, oh. Do 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 do! Ah! Oh! Good thing I took that medication that my that one guy get. Oh! Oh! oh, oh, oh. Trover saves the universe. Coming soon to the Oculus Quest. Well, what can you say about Trover saves the universe? No, no, really. What what can you say about Trover saves the? Uh, here's pistol whip. Hey, what's up? I'm Joel from Cloudhead Games. I'm here with my best friend, Anthony. We are here to talk to you today about the future of our hit action rhythm FPS, Pistol Whip. Pistol Whip. Anthony's gonna give you a quick recap of all the awesome content we've released since launch, and then we'll get into some big, juicy announcements about where we're taking the game over the next year. Anthony, go! Thanks, Joel! Since our launch in November, we've released five action-packed content updates, each with a new scene to play, new customization options, and new modifiers to shake things up. Just last week, we put out the Religion update, topping out our regular content updates with an epic five-and-a-half-minute gauntlet and the Baba Yaga Pistol Collection for all you John Wick fans. If you thought death was a challenge before, Religion is sure to whip you into shape. This was one of my favorite scenes to design, and I hope you love it. Thanks for the recap, Anthony. Now let's get to the good stuff. As you may have heard, we've been working very hard to get Pistol Whip into the hands of PlayStation VR players around the world, and today we are super happy to finally announce the official release date for PSVR. Enjoy. Let's go. 
After we launch Pistol Whip on PSVR July 28th, we'll be putting out our next free content update, the Heartbreaker Trilogy. After a season of face-melting music for fighters, this one is for the lovers. For Heartbreaker, we wanted to do something a little different, mixing up the vibe and offering a kind of chilled out action experience. We were really inspired by trippy, rhythmic action games like Sayonara Wild Hearts, and you can expect abstract, colorful, and highly musical scenes, all powered, of course, by classic Pistol Whip action. The Heartbreaker trilogy launches with three new scenes, two new modifiers, some water guns, and achievements on PC and Quest this August, and later on PSVR. And finally, to cap off the year, we'll be releasing a massive update that will begin a whole new era for Pistol Whip. We can't announce all the details just yet, but we're calling it the Concierge. The Concierge will launch alongside our first action pack, which will include new enemies, new weapons, new scenes, and new mechanics, all framed by a cinematic action campaign. All right, that wraps up the roadmap for 2020. This is just the beginning. Thank you so much for playing the game and being a part of our amazing community. We hope you've enjoyed this look into the future of Pistol Whip. Pistol Whip is bringing plenty to the table this year, starting with next month's PSVR release. Next up, we've invited someone to give us a long-awaited update on The Walking Dead Onslaught. Hey everyone, I just finished doing the voice recording for Walking Dead Onslaught, the video game coming to VR soon. I played a little bit of this in its early stages at Comic-Con and it was cool as shit. And they reminded me that was an actual quote. Um, they built this little box in my basement this little computer here and uh yeah i screamed my head off i hope you guys like it and um hoping everyone's safe and well okay bye you know i think i could beat daryl dixon in a fight if only there was some vr game i could prove that in q blast on hi i'm Mathieu castelli chief creative at resolution games we're very happy to be back at the Blood vr showcase to talk to you about blaston and what better place to talk about a game than from inside it let's hop into blaston now, you probably know Resolution Games better from Angry Birds VR, I Love Peaks, Bait, Acron Attack of the Squirrel, but Blaston is a very different game. It's a physically intense dueling game where you'll be fighting other players and bots. In the game, weapons spawn around you, which you just grab and fire at the opponent. The first two zero health points loses the round. Now, depending on which weapon you decide to bring to battle, very different battle dynamics emerge. But enough talking, we have for you today a first gameplay trailer reveal. So relax, enjoy, and remember, never stay still. See you soon in Blaston. Fastest guns in the virtual west win when Blaston arrives later this year. Okay, time for one final surprise. There's no time for logos. We've got gigs to do. Let's go! If you don't get me, Donut, right now, I'm rating you one star. Uh, I'm feeling kind of glitchy. <laughs> Excuse me. I ordered a pineapple smoothie. Hello, human. I am baby. I'm promoting products on my bossagram. Give me free stuff and maybe I'll post about it. Hi, human. 
I hear you do gig work now. Can you get me a towel? Whistle quickly before someone sees. Give me a efficiency bot plushie. Don't judge me. Dispensing one baby sound to indicate pleasure. Ah! Vacation simulator back to job initiates release this fall. Okay, and that's that. Thank you so much for joining us for another year of the Upload VR Showcase. Also, a big, big thank you to all the developers and to the team at Polyarc. Check out UploadVR.com for full coverage of today's videos. We're now heading back into our virtual studio to talk about the show, and there's more interviews to come. Cool, see you next year. And that was the Upload VR Showcase Summer Edition. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. We are now back in the virtual studio. I'm uh, Jamie, one of your hosts. Next to me is Zena. Yep, you saw me or heard me throughout the uh, showcase. Cool. And joining us on our post-show panel is David Jagno. What's up, everybody? I love you. Ian Hamilton. Hi. Tatiana... Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Don't do it. Oh, no. I'm sorry. You and haven't heard Ian us. try to say my last name. I do. I answer, I answer it like three extra syllables. So you <laughs> stopped yourself right before. Joining us uh, from our sponsor, Polyarch, the makers of Moss, is Brendan. Brendan, I don't know your second name. I'm sorry. Oh, it's oh, Walker. Walker, how's it going? Brendan yeah, Walker, everyone. Thanks for joining us, Brendan. Ooh, thanks so much for having me. Pleasure to be here. Cool. So we're just going to spend like half an hour or so going through some of the announcements from this year's show. Uh, really, really glad the show's done. It's taken a lot of work, but we've had some really, <laughs> really awesome announcements this year. Um, and I thought, yeah, where where better to kick things off with than you know the first thing we revealed, which was new gameplay of Solaris Off World Combat from First Contact Entertainment. We saw. Uh, this is a game that we've been looking forward to for some time. We revealed it at the E3 VR showcase last year with just, just the name. Then we had like a behind the scenes video at the holiday showcase. You can mm. see it up on the screen now. And now we finally got uh, gameplay uh, for the first time. Guys, what did you think of what we saw? I'm hype. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been waiting for Solaris for a really long time. Uh, you know, like talking to the guys at First Contact, and, you know, since last year. This, this I think it's gonna be great. Like it's it's different, right? You know, you have what was it, it was it eight players total? Yeah, four yeah. before. Yeah, I think it's gonna open a lot of opportunities for other people to start developing more arena type games like that. Mm, yeah, for sure. It's uh it's it's four v four and it's on Quest Rift and it's coming to PSVR as well. And I think particularly in for Quest seems like a good game like there's not a lot of like online shooters there's dead and buried 2 but i feel like it could find a real audience mm -hmm. there I don't, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 i'm sure it's it's all stick based like firewall this is my understanding yeah because firewall is their other game on psvr and um what i like about this is that it takes a different stance to the vr shooter as opposed to most in vr because yep. A lot of companies are trying to emulate as realistically as possible what it's like to be in combat. But this game is like a VR within VR meta sort of situation mm. where you jack into a esports player in the future that is playing a VR shooter. Mm. And it's all like super fast paced. It's like Quake mixed with Unreal. And it's just, you know, you pick up the weapons on the map as you run around and it's all just like super accessible jump in, jump out. Um, so I think that it'll, I think it'll do well on Quest is is my my guess. Yeah, Brendan, have you been waiting for a multiplayer shooter on Quest? Yeah, um, you know it's funny. I uh, had played uh, Aspire One last on the Quest, and I really enjoyed oh, yeah. the, the single player campaign for that. I really like the locomotion on that one. Um, but but yeah, you sort of feel like well, it's fun to play against AI, but but nothing is the same as playing against actual people. I love paintball and um, laser tag and rec room. Um, and uh, when I saw this, I was like, oh, man, this is this looks like this is totally going to scratch that itch. So, yeah, I'm really excited for this. Yeah, no, I think it looks great. I think I think it's it's great to have that kind of content on Quest. I think a lot of like kind of the hardcore gamer types will be really, really pining for it. Another really great kind of hardcore focus game we saw today was Panther VR, which is mm. now out, uh, which is going to be releasing today on uh, on PC VR headsets. 
Really, really interesting. I think me and Zena editing the showcase, we've really enjoyed that trailer, wouldn't you agree? Especially the art style, maybe some of the yeah. violence as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And obviously the little reference at the end. Uh, yeah, I love oh, that joke a, yeah. so much. There's a little mm -hmm. Metal Gear reference in there. Yeah. Not the only Metal Gear reference we have in the showcase, actually. Mm -hmm. Although it was, like, <laughs> absolutely brutal, like, looking at some of the gameplay, like, a guy taking a wrench to a guy's leg and then jumping down and stabbing through the... That, that, was, that was, yeah, like you said, hardcore. That's probably one of the most hardcore, like, apart from Saints and Sinners. Yeah, gameplay yeah, sure. wise. Definitely, and, and definitely for me, especially, the, uh... like, when you watch footage like that of a VR game, the viewer knows, like, oh, I can actually do that physically. Mm. You know, you're not just watching a scripted CG sequence like in a normal game. Like, you're watching someone actually doing that with their hands. And so mm. it, it kind of makes you more excited because you're like, oh, I'm getting ideas now of how creative I can be. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for yes. sure. Yeah. That one's, uh, <laughs> that one's out in early access today on PC VR. So, yeah, that's, mm. that's going to be really interesting for a lot of people, I think. Moving yeah. on, we went to... Um, Rafe, I have to say this right because I keep saying this wrong. Rafe, the Oblivion Afterlife. Uh, Afterlife. <laughs> everyone, unfortunately, everyone knows how to say because everyone knows, has known it's been coming for a week. But we got early development footage of this. Uh, this is this is one of those things where like I'm really really glad this game is being made. Um, the guys at Fast Travel sound super super positive about it. I interviewed them. We'll be putting up that interview uh, a little later on in the day. Uh, set in the world of Darkness Universe, which, you know, obviously lots of people have a lot of love for. Um, so, so much opportunity there, but at the same time, I, I just can't do horror VR games. I can't um... either. Like, my whole thing with horror VRs, for whatever reason, I feel like I can't close my eyes. So, like, when I did, yeah. um, what was it called? Uh, Nicodemus? Mm. The, the Void one? Like, I had to audibly tell myself like it's okay you can close your eyes like you can't do this. I, I just don't know what it is but just having it in your face uh, for me, I, I, just, I love that feeling I can't so hide much from it. And even if you close your eyes or you have that immersive 3d audio that's still like, yeah. You know, it. Mm, yeah you can't escape yeah, yeah. Right, so, i was really excited uh, about this one um but uh yeah she do you um, play do you play world of darkness uh, I don't actually. Uh, she, she, I guess, was familiar with the franchise. But it's funny. She uh, hates playing horror games, but she loves watching people play on Twitch. Maybe I can convince her to try it oh. for a little bit of time. Yeah, that's how my wife is too. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. No, the the full yeah. gameplay trailer for this one's coming up in uh, August. So I'm really looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. We had some early development footage in the showcase, uh, going around the mansion that's uh, featured in the concept art there. So that's that's really cool. Really exciting to see. Thanks, Fast Travel Games, for uh, mm -hmm. partnering with us again this year. And the other cool thing, too, about the World of Darkness is it's kind of making like a big comeback into gaming yep. because Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 is coming out. And then you have that yep. Werewolf Apocalypse game that's coming out mm. and now this game. And so it's really interesting to see because I feel like most tabletop RPG settings don't get a lot of recognition if you're not D&D &D or Pathfinder. And so it's kind of nice to see a horror themed one getting, you know, more recognition now. So it's exciting. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, no, I could go really far. And next was our uh, our second Solid Snake reference of the showcase. <laughs> uh, Mr. David Hater joined us to uh, to give us one final look at Phantom Covert Ops Phantom uh, coming Covert out on Ops. Phantom Covert Ops <laughs> uh, coming out on June 25th on the Oculus Rift and the Oculus Quest. You've been practicing uh, that voice for at least weeks, haven't you? That was pretty well, good. Uh, yeah, weeks, years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> Since I was like eight, but yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, solely preparing for this moment in time. Phantom Covert yeah. Ops also kind of feels like it'll give me like that Splinter Cell itch too, like not yeah, just sure. the Metal Gear Solid sure. itch because it mm -hmm. just looks super high fidelity and like the mechanics look really polished. And I'm, although I hate like stealth games, you know, on flat screen games, I think they're more fun in VR, and I think mm -hmm. I enjoy yeah, them a lot sure. more. I agree, I agree yeah. fully. Because I have personally only ever played the first Metal Gear because those games bore me to death. But oh. I love Espire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I totally but agree. I... <laughs> Go for it, Brendan. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I was say, uh, it, it, so a lot of my background um, had been in AI development. So I love playing stealth oh. games just because it's fun to see 
it's not often like in particularly in, in fast-paced action shooters you're you don't have time to react and see the mechanics that i do but in a stealth game right you're sitting there trying to to trick them or mm, do, do something in the yeah. environment and then see how they behave mm. but i love deus ex for that reason it's like a so chess match yeah. against the designer yeah exactly exactly <laughs> and so i saw something I was really it was really excited I, the other thing i was laughing about was like imagine the the uh evil org master i was like why do we build our base on the water well we can uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a naval base i, I need to point that out it's a naval uh, base. it makes sense <laughs> i swear and they're being completely they should make by... their uh their bridges should be much lower so you can't go mm -hmm. under them mm. yeah well they should just have bigger spotlights basically Essentially, but yeah. no, I, I mean, it's it's one of those things where, yeah, it does describing Phantom does sound a little silly, but once you sit down and play it, as I have mm -hmm. quite a lot of times now, I, I, I am really excited about this game from a design standpoint. We talked about mm -hmm. the AI, but then also just the immersion, right? Of just yep. the way you move, the fact that every gun in the game, every ammo pouch, every gadget has a certain place on your kayak. You mm -hmm. can just instinctively learn to grab to those areas and bring them up to your mm. face if it's like a pair of binoculars, yeah. for example. Well, it's that, that's incredibly the incredibly smart design. Sorry, mm -hmm. that's that's the thing. Bringing the gun. Uh, well, as speaking as you know, a person who's or also uh, tried out Phantom Cover Ops, um, bringing up um, which, which gun is it? I'd, I'm not well. The sniper guns. rifle. Sniper rifle. And you know, you have to close <laughs> one of your eyes <laughs> to look through. And in VR. That's incredible. That mm -hmm, that was mm -hmm. a kind of, you know, jumping over the fence kind of moment of, oh my god, this game is next level, pretty much. Yeah, it's a real light bulb moment, right? Light bulb, sorry. yeah, light bulb moment. Mm. Also, I want to say kudos to Indream for um, continuing to evolve and improve because I think we can all yeah. agree yes. this is by far <laughs> the best looking game they've ever worked on, <laughs> and they've they've done a lot of VR games. They've been doing this for a long time. Um, yeah, so it's, sure. it's really exciting to see a developer really kind of evolve and come into their own. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, had another uh, quest game coming up after Phantom, uh, also coming to PCVR called Star Shaman. This is a, or Star Shaman, sorry, that's Shaman. how they pronounce it. Shaman. <laughs> uh, this is Star Shaman. Uh, it's from a Paris based studio, a new Paris based studio called Icky Masho. We had the first trailer at the showcase. Which uh, means? Let's go. What? Oh, hey! oh, there you go. You know, <laughs> Icky Masho means let's go in Japanese. No, I'd actually <laughs> forgotten, so I'm really glad you're here. <laughs> oh, no, that was <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> they explained that to me earlier. But so the trailer for this, um, we've been we've been pl planning the like reveal of this game for a little while, and I remember seeing the trailer for this a couple of weeks ago and being like, "This is really cool. What the heck is it?" And yeah. uh, it working is. with the developer, they were like, "Yeah, that's kind gorgeous of the, artwork. The thing. My goodness, yeah, exactly. Right. The color palette is great too. Mm -hmm. mm, the yeah. purples and the blues and the teals. That's just that's just very aesthetically pleasing." Mm. Yeah, and then it seemed like there was some kind of interesting gameplay hints, like it's a spell casting game where you're hopping between planets, like like that art shows, and mm -hmm. it seems like we're going to be battling lots of enemies on different planets, like reaching out for orbs, throwing you know throwing spells and whatnot. So it, it could be a lot of fun. It's out this summer, I think, on uh, on Quest and, and PC VR. Well, the Pretty trailer promising. definitely uh, the trailer definitely made it seem like it's going to be super funky and like light-hearted not necessarily mm. oh i'm jumping from planet to planet it's i'm jumping yeah. from planet to planet to cool music i feel really cool that's yeah, the kind sure. of vibe that i got well, what was the first vibe again could you uh, how did that one go? <laughs> there's a planet over there i'm david Hader. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes our third reference i forgot about that one <laughs> <laughs> so um moving on from the lovely lovely visual design of uh, star shaman we have of course the lovely lovely visual design of the walking dead saints and sinners oh which gorgeous is, um, <laughs> <laughs> i think this is a aesthetic what <laughs> that's an aesthetic <laughs> okay yeah uh, you were trying to go for that spicy meatball but you said that's an aesthetic didn't you yeah <laughs> that's yeah, literally okay. exactly what i did <laughs> it, came, it came off really well Thank you. <laughs> so we saw the we saw the uh meat grinder update for the walking dead overkill coming soon i think coming in july to uh mm -hmm. pc vr and psvr where the game's already out Obviously, this is one of the really big games of this year so far, and I think people are going to be really jazzed to see it again. Brendan, have you played The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners yet? 
No, I haven't. I uh, I, I gotta be honest. I'm always really nervous about playing uh, zombie shooter games. There was a I know the prototype of a zombie wave shooter, and whenever you turn around and have a zombie like right in your face, it scares the hell out of me. Yeah, I can sympathize. The, the yeah, yeah, it's an excellent, excellent game, but I I can totally understand where you're coming from. It's um, it's a very tense game. It's not designed around jump scares. It's not. I don't. I don't mm. even know if I would technically call it like purely a horror game. It's more of a survival mm. shooter, I guess, in a yeah, way. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Very tense. I'm sorry. I'm, it's okay. Uh, well, I'm again. I'm also crap. Crap. That's louder. <laughs> oh my god! Jesus! Give, us, dude, my give it a phone alarm. <laughs> Holy shit! Hold on. Are you are you getting someone to join Jeez. in? With us? My god. Okay, there. Finally. There we go. Um, you're but you're right. Like I I can't really take VR horror games, <laughs> and this is this is definitely one I can play. I have played all the way through. I actually played the entire PSVR version a couple of months ago. Mm. Um. And I, I, the new update here is going to be adding a, the screenshot shows like some point scoring modes, uh, some general gameplay improvements. Um, I think people are going to, it's like a horde mode. So I think people are going to really enjoy having a reason to come back to the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners time and time again, right? Mm-hmm. Ian, you, you haven't played it either yet, right? I started it, but it, it came out one of, it was right around uh, Alex sort of push yeah. and I couldn't. Oh, it was, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, what, but I need to get in there, and I have to decide when because it does it does do that same scare thing for me. And it's funny when we talk about zombie games because yeah, that's it's like a zombie game is what you have to visit if you're going to go into VR. And people do have these kind of like yeah, horrific memories of their first time trying a, a zombie <laughs> game. Mm-hmm. But, I yeah, say, yeah, like, yeah, Alex uh, was sorry, enough for me. Jeff was enough for me, and I'm not willing to <laughs> go back in yeah, there okay, very soon. Enough. Jeff. Yeah, there is something to be said for wave shooters. Definitely a little less scary because it's not like you don't have that dread of an upcoming attack. I feel like in Half Life, uh, uh, Alex, I'd had that moment, you know, of like seeing the slowly approaching single zombie and knowing you're about to run out of a clip or whatever, right? Like that kind of dread. Yeah. But if it's more of a yep. wave shooter, it's like okay, whatever. These guys are popcorn, so this isn't as terrifying. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. That's, that's very true. That's a really good way of putting it, popcorn like. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I was getting so scared. I saw I got as far as them in the tires, right? Them being sort of like the tutorial where they're teaching you how to deal with mm. the zombies. I'm like, this is you this is scary enough heads. even now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I can't deal with it when they're not in tires. <laughs> um, yeah. Those, yeah, those hordes get pretty big, especially if you're in a building that has no lights and very tight hallways and you run out of ammo. Oh my god. It, mm. Yeah. Hey, T, if I was to, uh, to take a break from the schedule of what we've got and ask you what your favorite game we've featured this year is, what what might you say of the trailers we've got? I don't like Phantom is pretty good. I have notes. Panther also kind of looks pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, Gravity I think Panther's Labs. a great show. And Cosmophobia yeah. kind of gave me like cool vibes too. Ghost Patrol was very like Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> I, it's it gives me like the Luigi's Mansion in VR mm. vibe mixed with a little bit of Ghostbusters. Mm. And I've always found like the Luigi's Mansion games really fun. And the Ghostbusters game on Xbox 360 was actually mm, pretty well done. True. You know, being yeah. a movie based game. Um, and it, I think it is something that would be really fun in VR, like even like in a VR arcade, if you had some sort of vacuum controller, you know, like a controller that looks like one of those guns, I just think that'd be just really fun, especially when you're doing it with friends, because Luigi's yeah. Mansion is just, you know, you, right? So to be able to be fully immersed in that kind of fun spooky, because it's not like horror horror, it's fun spooky. Mm, and to be yeah, able to sure. share that with your friends, I think is, I would, I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I mean, uh, it's it's coming to VR arcades. It's the first time we've we've featured an arcade game actually in the showcase, which is really mm-hmm. really cool. Um, obviously, a very interesting and challenging time for arcades right now. And this one this one is planning to come out the gates, you know, when it's when it's possible. And I'm really looking I'll forward to. I'll go in a hazmat suit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I like no to see try and get a headset on in a hazmat suit. <laughs> I guess they could pass it in through the top. Anyway, yeah, it's not yeah. worth thinking about. Um, so actually another game you mentioned there um which is a good maybe a good sort of companion piece to ghost patrol is cosmophobia because that is a (laughs) again getting back to the horror thing that is a very different kind of horror game and that's that's the latest game from the guys uh sorry the guy that made uh dreadhalls 
mm. which is obviously oh. very famous. Yeah, very famous. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Really heavily reminded me of Dead Space. Yes, the way yeah, that like exactly. the lighting and the environments <laughs> and like the way the levels are designed really gives me a huge Dead Space vibe. And we haven't had a game like that in a really long time because Doom is more, you know, you kind of just run and gun, go in, and you're expecting to just kill a bunch of stuff. Whereas, you know, something like Dead Space is you don't know what to expect and you're opening different doors and you have a flashlight and cosmophobia, mm. like, really got me excited for something mm. like that. To is be this procedural sure. again? Is this one a procedural? Is, yeah, it's procedural again. So it's, it's, yeah. It's very, very similar to uh, Dreadhorse, but I think, you know, he's just basically, uh, Sergio, the developer, is just basically adding a whole new fun kind of set of ingredients in there to make yeah, it I got just some, as spooky uh, as it was last time. Some persistence vibes as well. Oh, that's a great shout, actually, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's definitely yeah. a persistence kind of game. Hey, Brendan, what, what stood mm-hmm. out to you in the showcase so far from what we've talked about or, or what we haven't talked about? Yeah, so it's funny. So, uh, Definitely Cosmophobia. I was very excited. But it's funny, I kind of contradict myself, right? Because that one in some ways looks creepier than a zombie shooter, right? It's, it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, all yeah. about the anticipation. Uh, but I love Exploration. I actually get some System Shock vibes myself from that one. Yeah, um, for sure. So I was, yeah, really excited to check that one out. But also, uh, Space Team. Um, I loved... Hey. Oh, oh, nice, yeah. Friends. Big fan of that one. And I love I, I love any kind of co-op game. And that one's just fun and lighthearted. Um, I love uh, playing Bridge Crew uh, when, when you can finally coordinate with friends to get the headsets together. So bridge crew. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so this one seemed like, you know, a perfect fit. Um, and I, I love those uh, those party games. Now that a few of my friends actually request, that seems like a really great fit for that. So um, I'm yeah, really excited sure. to try that one out. Because before I was yeah. going to keep talking, it was kind of it, the other. It like, can get party. very loud. It's very, very fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you get... Did you get the uh, Bioshock uh, vibes from Trial by Tang? Oh, yes. yeah. That, look at that. How's that for a segue, Ian? That's fantastic. Nice. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> yeah, that's actually, I. that's one of the reasons that Trial by Tang is one of my uh, favorite trailers of the showcase, because they do really nail that kind of very intriguing, kind of cheesy, kind of forgotten world yeah. uh, mm. vibe so well. And there's so much... I say this a couple of times in the uh, the showcase, actually, but there's so much intrigue in this <laughs> virtual world in particular. And, and Trial by Ting, of course, a new puzzle game from the makers of Form, uh, Charm Games. Form was a really, really great uh, puzzle game from back in like the uh, 2017, I think. Uh, yeah, we got to debut the first gameplay from the game. Uh, you can see a screenshot here of this this happy chap. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I think I think Bioshock vibes is really, really right. Even mm-hmm. though it's yeah, gonna sure. it's gonna be a very different kind of gameplay experience. I don't know what anyone else thought of the thought yeah of the that, that art palette is uh, very reminiscent and the kind of the steampunk down there. You can see the ticket thing down there and mm-hmm. yeah, it's looking great. Yeah. A lot of cool opportunity for environmental storytelling. There it was a really interesting theme, wasn't uh, one that I had seen quite before. Yeah. So. I'm mm. a big sucker yeah. for lanterns too, so I'm like, yeah, more of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, sure. Hey, Zena. Hey, Jamie. What's your favorite game of the showcase so far? Oh my goodness. Um. Well, let's talk about the kind of big ending. Not saying that the other uh, trailers weren't big oh, throughout the showcase. Good choice. But, but good choice. I I feel like throughout throughout the ending, you know, we we had well, of course. I'm, I'm going to say it. Get ready. Pistol whip. Yes. <laughs> you took it. You took it. You, you've, t- you've taken Ian's line. <laughs> oh, no. Poor oh, Ian. Oh, no. I'm so, I, yeah. I kind of felt like I had to say it before you did as well. Like, just to kind of... <laughs> yeah. Um, so they had a lot to talk about. I me. do think, though, we should let Ian read the graphic. Please, <laughs> please, go ahead, Ian. Over to yeah, you. Actually, yeah, From, I, the, I top this corner, from the top left corner. From the top left to... corner. I talked. Yeah, you want me to say it, don't you? I talked to I Anthony to over there at uh, <laughs> Cloudhead, and we'll post that interview so you can sort of get a better idea of their roadmap. And yeah, so they they did a they sort of recapped that they've added five songs since release. That was one of the biggest sort of complaints uh, out the gate. It was even one of the biggest complaints about Beat Saber back when it debuted. Was mm. only ten songs is kind of limiting mm. and. Uh, so they've clearly expanded the core library there, and then coming to PlayStation is the big sort of thing everyone that's got a PSVR has wanted, and it's such a good fit for that headset being a front-facing game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then yeah. Uh, these, yeah. mm-hmm. these two major expansions, uh, yeah. where I talked to them in that interview a little bit in detail about what they're 
sort of can say and what they can't say right now about these things. But I think that's uh, they. it's clearly top of mind to them that they need to expand the way you want to play it and appeal to a broader set of audiences that maybe weren't hooked by uh, what's already there, even though it did yeah. look such a large number of people like they, I kind of thought it would when we reviewed it and saw it early for before our showcase uh, last year. And uh, it's just very exciting to see that they're kind of like coming up with these other ways to expand on the game. So there's the going to be three is... scenes with the Heartbreaker. That's a more relaxed experience. That's the, the one concierge. that I'm looking forward to. Yeah. yeah. I honestly wanted you to say Pistol Whip eleven times, but yeah, I was <laughs> giving us the information. I, and I, and I, and I wouldn't let you too. do it. No. Let's um let's switch up to one of the the less gamey things we saw this year, which is something I really want to talk about, which is Agents. Now, Agents is this kind of really intriguing AI-driven experience. Intriguing. That, oh, yeah, intriguing. Word of the day. <laughs> word of the showcase. Today's showcase was spon- uh, sponsored by the word intriguing. intriguing. <laughs> um, Agents is a really, really interesting little thing. It's about it's about it's set on this planet with these tiny little AI-driven characters, and the whole um, the whole hook behind the experience is that you're going to be able to kind of influence their AI and they're going to be able to learn behaviors and learn things about you depending on the way you treat them and also just depending on their own individual personalities. Now, it sounds kind of early. I don't know where they're, they're really going to go with it. But to me, that's actually one of the most interesting areas of research into mm-hmm. VR at the moment. We were talking, you were yeah. talking earlier, Brendan, about AI mm-hmm. and stealth games. But mm-hmm. just, just going even beyond the idea of where are you? Have you been seen? Does the enemy know where you are? You know, the, the concept to AI characters of who are you and do I like you and mm-hmm. am I going to react realistically to pretty much anything you do is just incredibly, incredibly complicated, but a, and a, but a huge hurdle that's very important to leap over in making virtual worlds, right? Absolutely. No. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'll say, uh, you know, trying to make a compelling character in VR is a ton of work. Um, and often right now we're forced to do very, very scripted moments. Um, and further, it's hard to, to make sure that the players even pay attention to it, right? Like, um, mm. you want to make sure that the, because the player can look wherever they want to, that they're actually seeing the thing. And so try and design uh, interaction mechanics that, that, that incentivize you to look at the character doing it. Uh, one of uh, coworkers had a funny thing they said back when I was at Bungie about like how if you can't understand what the AI is thinking, then it might as well be random. Um, so you can have a really mm. complicated internal model, but you need to also have all the other parts outside of it to describe that. Um, mm. And... And have those really clear, obvious hooks about when you're supposed to interact with it is also really interesting too. Like I, I don't know if you guys ever played the uh, the creature simulation game Black and White. Um, we were oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it said that problem of you know, the edges you could try to reward, punish the time, but like it was not sometimes clear when you were given the right signal. Like the creature would eat a villager and then poop next to a building, and then you're just like, no, I didn't want you to eat the villager, and so you'd punish it, and then it's like the creature will no longer poop against the side of the building. Like no, it's funny. No, you know. Yeah. But I mean, that can also do the charm too. So it's interesting trade-off. So I think that's I'm really glad people are looking into, into that. I think that's um, a really important, deep problem. I'm glad I'm not the one mm. to tune it because that sounds very hard. <laughs> um, but yeah, super. Yeah, you, you got you got cute mice down really, really early on before <laughs> anyone else could. <laughs> we don't very need the AI. We've got the mouse. Very constrained behavior. <laughs> the, the thing I thought of when you were talking about all that was gnomes and goblins came out of nowhere. Oh, yes. uh, yeah, yeah. Another, our, another great example showcase. of that. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I'm really curious to see how far they were able to take that system um, because they had that sort of reactive character. And uh, we'll see what they do with that expanded world there. It's oh, like maybe Yoda Yoda. Harry's not here to complain. Oh, there he is. <laughs> maybe Yoda uh-huh, Harry. Yeah. It's great to uh, <laughs> it's great to see it back as well because this was announced a long, long time ago, like you said, Ian. Mm. And it's it involves, I guess, John Favreau, the director of Iron Man, who mm. I remember a long time ago you actually met and spoke to uh, him <gasps> yeah. about it. Right? Very jealous. I got to sit down, yeah. And, uh, yeah, with him and talk to him about it, and it was interesting conversation because he clearly had a very a uh, deep understanding of where VR was at that time. And mm. he was like uh, talking about uh, getting scared in VR. That was one of the discussions mm. there was uh, this idea of fear. And one of the lasting quotes that sort of uh, stuck with me was, you know, you don't have to be afraid in that original gnomes and goblins thing. It's going to be safe for you. There's nothing, mm. no matter what you do, uh, you know, you're, you're, whatever your interactions are with the creature, you're not really going to, um, cause a shark to come out at you or, you know, that sort of thing. You're not going to create a world that's so scary you're going to want to rip the headset off. And I thought that was such a an interesting way of 
kind of thinking about VR at the time. And then, of course, uh, he went on to do uh, Lion King, Jungle Book, uh, yep. Mandalorian, and all of those, I believe, have VR very deeply embedded in their production ecosystems because you can do virtu- you can do so much with virtual cameras and visualizing the the world that you're going to be filming and your actors are going to be in. Uh, and it's clearly become a very important tool. But uh, obviously, Weaver uh, is the company behind the blue. They did the expanded yep. experience that you went, you and I went and tried at uh, that was fun. Dreamscape Immersive. That really expanded on that world. Had really reactive environments where you could like touch the little uh, creatures that are in the wall, and they would like react and fold up like the I can't what sea anemones and like a sea cucumber anemone. I can't remember what it was. But it has a sea cucumber. Like a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A mini, mini, mini. Um, a mini, 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 mini. <laughs> okay. But yeah, like, I'm really curious to see how, long, how far they're able to take that world and those reactive characters with a, an expansion. Yeah, for sure. I think that's, yeah, that's a really, I, it's been really great this year as well to see agents and gnomes and goblins, two, two things that kind of push the boat away from gaming a little bit. And I think, mm. you know, as we get further into VR, the lifespan of VR headsets, I think we are going to see that more. Right? We are going to see more of these experiences that that blur the lines that aren't just, you know, in a in a traditional console game, you might describe them as like walking simulators, you know, games where you don't do anything. But here, it's those kind of key interactions with AI that's really mm. making It'd be a difference. Really and- interesting if you know, fingers crossed, the PSVR two comes out. Uh, plays with the PlayStation Five, that Quantic Dream does something with it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. that's true. Like, yeah. imagine playing Detroit. What does it become or Beyond Human become human? Beyond Human. The, beyond no, Human. Become Human. The become beyond, beyond Human. Beyond was the game that we don't soft. talk about. Okay. Um, yeah, Beyond yep. Two Farts. Uh, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> but imagine playing that okay. kind of game completely immersed in VR. Where you know mm-hmm. you are yeah. an AI and you're walking mm-hmm. around and you're interacting with things and making decisions, I just feel it would be a really emotional experience and immersive. Mm. You know, yeah. just, I would love to speaking, see them do something. Speaking of really intelligent AI, Trevor's saves the universe is coming across. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy so, that, everyone? <laughs> a great game right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, David, you reviewed that last year, right? I think it was last year that it came out, maybe two years ago. Somewhere in there, yeah. Time yeah, is yeah. Right. Um, mm. Exactly. Great, yeah. great, great, great choice. I really request. enjoyed it. It's mm. it's hilarious. I mean, if you don't like Rick and Morty and you don't like Justin Roiland, you might not like it. But it's um, I mean, it's the whole game. It's like you're sitting in a room having a conversation with him and various different personalities that he's portraying, and it's just it's so funny. It's it's a very good platformer. Like it's a good action mm. game in and of itself. Mm. But the is. humor just takes it to a new level. I mean, it's it's one of the it's one of the rare games where it's hard to go more than like five minutes without cracking a smile or laughing. Mm. And it's just it's so well done. It's really fun. And it's very very meta. Like there's a lot of you know commentary about VR, about you know what your character is doing, what your place inside the world is. And it's it's really good. It's it's, I think yeah. it's. I was gonna say I think it's also like a good break with everything that's going mm. on, you know, yeah. in the world to have something on that kind of level of humor because Rick and Morty is super ridiculous. popular. Everyone, yeah, you know, not everyone, but you know, I'm gonna say 85 percent of the people like enjoy you know that show and that kind of humor and to now be able to immerse yourself in that on Quest if you didn't have, you know, a computer and stuff before or a PlayStation like, I think it's gonna be great. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure, for sure. There were other great Quest sports as well. Tatiana earlier mentioned Gravity Lab. Great to have that on Quest. I think that would be mm-hmm. a really fun, really fun puzzler. It, it uh, reminds me of Marble Madness, which I yeah, have totally. no shame, yeah. no shame, totally. put like <laughs> hundreds of hours into Marble mm-hmm. Madness. Mm-hmm. And it's such a, yeah, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, VR can bend the rules, so let's just do it this mm-hmm. way. And it's such a nice exploration of that. I think I think it's going to be really, really great to explore those kind of uh, Rube Goldberg machine kind of creations that you can make with the wirelessness. Wirelessness mm-hmm. of the quest. Mm-hmm. Wireless. Mm-hmm. Just, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's also a getting, word now. Also getting uh, traffic jams on quests and uh, PC VR and PSVR in September. That's going to be a fun little. It's super like fun Acron, little party game. Acron vibes, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Last so we've got the multiplayer Acron. mode. Mm. But that that yeah, it it definitely looks really fun. Um, I think uh, especially you and I have made. Um, 
a lot of use of those types of VR apps, right? Of sitting down with your mobile and uh, someone in a headset, and especially like when family yeah, comes sure. around or something, that's where it really shines, right? Yeah, for sure. That's a, that's a really great point. Me and you do use those quite a lot because it is such a great way to showcase this stuff to people so very, very quickly and efficiently. Um, and it's and in such a fair way because I mean just everyone takes turns at the end of the day and I, exactly, so yeah I, yeah I think I think traffic jams is going to be a lot of fun it lo it looks really good uh, also had area man lives coming to quest and PC VR oh That's, my gosh yeah. I, I have a very special place in my heart for that game because there's a lot of history to it it was originally a series called Untethered that was exclusive to a little platform no one's ever heard of called Google Daydream. Um, <laughs> It was uh, it was like a, it was meant to be a three part series, and it got two parts in, and then obviously uh, uh, Google Daydream went the way it did. But it's uh, now published by Cyan Ventures, which is the kind of funding publishing arm of the developer of Mist and Firmament mm. and uh, Abduction is the the other VR game they did. Yeah, they're doing this this strange, quirky little mystery show set in a radio station. Um. You can talk to people on the radio using the Quest mic um, or the or the headset mic, and I, I think there's so many cool opportunities in that idea. I really can't wait to see where they go with it. Also made by Numinous Games, the developers of that Dragon Cancer, if you remember that mm. from a couple of years ago. So mm -hmm. just, yeah, I mean, clearly a developer with a lot of like uh, clout in the industry, and I think. I'm going to be really interested to see where they take it. Now they finally get to see the whole vision completed. Uh, what else have we got? Let me look through my list. Had Norman Reedus stop by for the walking oh, game? Oh, yeah. On oh, our friend. You know, just, our friend just friend of the in. show, Norman Reedus, <laughs> just casually he's, saying uh, hello. He's doing pretty good. He, uh, he said hi, Jamie. I talked to him after. You know, we're, we're like good friends. So, you know. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate I didn't. Yeah. I didn't get to catch up with Norm this year, unfortunately. Norm. I'm looking yeah. forward to him. Oh, I'm looking forward yeah. to him. And that's good. Yeah, that's gonna be that's uh, <laughs> that's the Servios Walking Dead game, not Saints and Sinners. It's their game that um, was revealed last that's year and has been away for a while. Yes. Next up, another <laughs> quest port. We we've got In Death coming in, which I'm really looking forward to. David, you love In Death, right? Yeah, it's very good. It's um, it's basically a roguelike. You know, you um, kind of go spawn into this chapel in the sky sort of setting that's surrounded mm -hmm. by like all these death angels and death knights that are attacking you and um you have you have a bow and arrow and you have to try and get as far as you can and then as you progress through the stages you unlock different bonuses and abilities that get to you get to apply on your next run um so it's uh, very replayable very um, quick and fun game. It's very intense. It's not. It's not quite a horror game, but as you can see, these guys are are not friendly. Oh, disgusting! Um, <laughs> and it was, That's my best friend. Why would you say that? <laughs> He's about to die. Back when it first came out on PC VR and early access, this was back in like I don't know, 2017 or something like that. It, it was one of the first games that really nailed the bow and arrow in a larger mm. setting beyond just a wave shooter. Um, so it, it it's a really great game. It's very, very good, very fun. And being able to spin around wirelessly with, with wirelessness, I think it's going to be a, a, a big, yes, a big bonus. Wirelessness is very important for the future of VR. Yeah. I don't know if, I was I don't really know if excited you know that. About, uh, oh, sorry. So no, I was really excited about this one, too. Um, the, I don't know if you guys ever played, um, there's an earlier VR dungeon crawler uh, called, uh, For, I think it's Forgotten Realms, um, that had a little bit oh, of Oh, Vanishing Realms. A bit of, uh, Vanishing Realms, thank you, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I really loved, it was the first time I really like had a fun using a bow and arrow in VR for, there's a dungeon crawler, it's fun like knocking up items off of like upper racks and things like that and trying to take out enemies from a distance. So this one looks like it's a very satisfying implementation of that I'm really excited to try Yeah, that. for sure. I think we've, there was another really good uh, looking dungeon crawler in Oprencia. Um, Prince, yeah, which, yeah. yeah, which is a game available now on Steam, but is soon coming to VR. But it's cool. It's really cool to see like more VR ports as well. I think that's such a fun mm. area of this industry, even though, I mean, obviously it takes a lot of work to get a game running well in VR, but when developers do it well, it's like a real treat. So I'm really looking forward mm -hmm. to a Prince as well. I know we're... I especially... Uh, uh... Sorry, I just Go wanted to say, I especially love the look of the uh, little toad guys in it. I'm really looking forward to <laughs> yes. me and them in VR. <laughs> I liked how on, By meeting, non threatening it looked. Like, it, it looks so much more yeah. relaxing than these other games we keep putting up here. The, the like look more like magical, the, like. Yeah. 
you know it's very yeah. wholesome. well i mean if you want to talk about that we can always talk about vertigo remastered which oh it's not not a game of fret i would no. say mm. kind of really interesting i i'm so interested by like the story behind this and its sequel vertigo 2 yeah. which is coming out as well uh developed by zalubu productions a one-man team uh zach on the team who is 19 and at the age 19. of 19 is <laughs> wow. working on his working on his third vr game and has already worked at uh at valve for some time <laughs> developing wow uh, the moon dust demo for uh, for the index a while ago, and he worked a little bit on Alex as well. And and what Vertigo remastered is is revisiting his first VR game, going back through it top to bottom, new graphics, uh, some of the advancements he's making in Vertigo Two. He went back and put in place. Um, I remember back in 2016, calling like reviewing that game, just finding it on Steam and thinking it looked kind of interesting, being like really really interested at the scale um of the game without even knowing that it was pulled off by a one-man development team who at the time would have been about 15 or 16. oh my goodness <laughs> um, yeah yeah and yeah he's just done an incredible job and going back and, and seeing what he's doing with vertigo remastered i think is gonna get a lot more people to take uh to pay attention to it because it definitely is a game that is worthy of that because it offers so much as a single player adventure um, it's it's about it's, it's such it's such a brilliant strategy right uh to to sort of have that one person team where you can kind of afford to go back and retry yep. the game and, and rebuild the game and there has been so much learned in those four years of evolution in the vr mm -hmm. market. Yeah, exactly. so it's it's such a great fit and i'm uh, of all the games in this showcase, outside of Pistol Whip, that is the one I am most excited about. Outside of what? Into. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also um, I'm really really excited about Blast On, uh, which is the new mm. game from Resolution Games. Kind of reminds me of a Quest game from earlier this year called Iron Lights from E. McNeil, which was a kind of slow motion melee combat game, but this time around it's regular speed uh, gun dueling on quest and uh, some other platforms i don't think they've announced yet um the idea being that the bullets come at you in slow motion so your opponent is kind of making your very own bullet hell <laughs> for mm -hmm. you as it were one thing i think is yeah, so fascinating do. about a game design like this is um it's uh, make or break by the weapon design and interplay between the sandbox they've created there um it, if and it looks like they've spent a lot of time thinking about this but you know when you're trying to uh release a volley you're also opening yourself up to and i'm really curious to see how they balance the cooldowns and stuff that, uh on the weapons because um you can, mm. you can try to go out really aggressive you inadvertently open yourself up and what is the interplay for that it also looked like uh the trail that mid combat you could select which weapon you're using too kind of dynamically mm. it's pretty interesting um so yeah i don't know I, this is uh super fascinating to see. i'm really it'll, looking forward to playing this one it'll be really cool if you can get like some really like uh great loadouts that you can make your own mm -hmm. right and like mm -hmm. they, we'll have to see how deep it goes but if they have like even like 10 or 20 weapons that people can cycle through and and yeah. find what works for them and create like really dynamic innovative play styles of their own that would be like a, a, a really interesting uh, way to highlight how vr can be far more expressive for players as well i think mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, no. it's a good point. So if you just give everybody everything all at once, it feels like more of a soup. But if there's like you're committing to a class, so to speak, or a loadout, like you said, um, yeah. then you can start having conversations about what loadouts are good versus other loadouts. It's really interesting. Yeah, kind for of sure. Rock, paper, scissors, you know, balancing mechanic there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. D David, we you want to say something? Yes. <laughs> I want to say my expectations are high for a little game called Lo-Fi. <laughs> oh, yes. oh yeah. you like that? I like that? Yeah, that was yeah, very well good. Done. Very good. Well Lighting done. Well that. done, good sir. Lord, that was incredible. Yeah, we got another look at we got another look at Lo-Fi from uh, Iris VR. This one's been looking, been looked forward to, for mm. lack of a better term, for a long time now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Saw a Blair developer today tweeting that it's going to be on PS5 as well. That's, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Come on, Blair. Come on. We we see what you did there. We see what you did. <laughs> yeah, it um it it looks it looks really wonderful. I I played a very early alpha build and um he's already nailed the most important part of a game like this and um just visually it's extremely mm -hmm. satisfying mm -hmm. and I mean the atmosphere is totally there. Um you know the ship flight feels really great and fun. 
Um, the kind really of navigation on it is like mm. it, it's gorgeous, yeah. like how it lifts up. Yeah. Yeah, mm. and the radio that comes on with the the music mm. is just uh, it's it's so cyberpunk. It's just like it, it feels amazing to play. And I'm well. What remains to be seen is like structurally, what will the game really be like? You know, because it's yeah. it's almost like a semi open world futuristic noir cyberpunk cop simulator like you yeah. you're this guy you're a detective in the future and apparently you can choose what you want to pursue like if you want to like go after Blade this Runner? case or yeah basically, basically. yeah yeah, yeah. i mean honestly like before you continue i just want to say i'm actually more excited for lo-fi than i am cyberpunk 2077 <laughs> oh wow, wow. Well, okay that is a claim i can, well, there you I go. can that's a ring i can write a thesis on that yeah. but but it doesn't yeah. have keanu in it we have to talk to Blair about getting Keanu. We don't know that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We, we don't, don't know that. Dominic yeah. Mohanigan, or whatever his I'll name just, is. I'll have my yep. boy Norman That's right. uh, call <laughs> Keanu. And uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Norman, Norman, Norman and Keanu are great buds, man. Best friends. <laughs> Another, actually, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because one of the last two games we've got to mention is Lon, which is, also again, looks another amazing. really. Yeah, another really interesting cyberpunk looking game. Neon ninjas, Neon, like yeah. Neon ninjas is the is the two two words for it for not long there it really, is. I, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think That's the yeah, tagline. I think new... <laughs> on, we also had Vacation Simulator. And that's yeah. <laughs> we haven't talked that's about it. that yet. That's the big closer. <laughs> which yeah. is really, big really great to see. So Vacation Simulator <laughs> back to job. Uh back gonna to be job. some DLC for uh Alchemy's second VR game, which kind of Oh, well, third, sorry, VR game, uh, which kind of bridges the gap with its first, of course, Job Simulator, one of the immortal all-time incredibly well-selling VR games. And I think it's really exciting to see those two worlds collide because I, I, I think speaking to them about it before they revealed it, they mentioned like it's, it almost feels a bit like the fifth job from Job Simulator that they, mm -hmm. they never got. Yeah, I've got a, a magnet really cool. on the side of my PC tower that says you can't spell workaholic without work. It's a job sim <laughs> magnet. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Very good. In, you oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Go for it. Go for it. I was like, these guys had a really great GDC talk this last year, too, talking about uh, both like kind of uh, some of the new mechanics they had in there for their stacking system and uh, uh, the complexity of, uh, involved in building a sandwich uh, was pretty fascinating. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, they this whole heat transfer mechanic for uh, stuff when you're, like, you're building a burger or whatever and, and uh I feel bad for their artists who had to create like the 20 different variations of a cooked piece of meat for the burger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only thing I was going to add complex. is I, I was thinking about these games and they're so similar and they're so different at the same time. Like there's, mm. they share so much and they're all, and they're both so different. And so it's going to be amazing to kind of see um, them merge in this way. In that, yeah, in that sure. sort of way. Yeah. Especially with the humor of you know, obviously the different uh, robots that come in. I am baby definitely made me laugh a lot. Uh oh, mm -hmm. I am baby. I am was, baby. <laughs> Human, was, I am baby. <laughs> your 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 favorite line of the showcase, second only to to something from Area Man Lives, right? What what was so, that? They're like, oh, it takes too much time making coffee for one person. I just suck on beans. <laughs> 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 I, just, I just killed me. <laughs> yeah, I, that's yeah. Uh, I think that's a great way to uh, to end. On, on that line. So, guys, <laughs> yeah. thanks so much for joining us today. Brendan, thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's been a real pleasure. pleasure to have you thank here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be having, uh, we're going to be coming back later in the day today. It's kind of upload VR day, as it were. Uh, we're going to have some more interviews with some of the developers in the showcase, learn a little bit more about some of the games we saw. Uh, yeah. So, stay tuned to our YouTube channel and uh, we'll see you later. Thanks so much. Bye. I have no hands. Bye. It's a lot of work to brew coffee for one. Usually at home, I just suck on beans.